cultivation of viruses. Viruses are obligate intracellular pathogen that require susceptible host cells to multiply. Various purposes of virus cultivation are to isolate and identify viruses in clinical samples, to study viral structure, the application, genetics and its effect on host cell and for vaccine production. Three basic laboratory models employed for virus cultivation are number one experimental animals, number two embryonated handset and number three cell culture. Cultivation of virus in experimental laboratory animals is a choice when it is unable to grow in embryonated egg or tissue culture. Such laboratory animals in case of animal viruses may be its homologous or heterologous host. The selected animal should be specific pathogen free and should have no prior immunity against the particular virus to be inoculated. Animals are used for virus cultivation with the purpose of virus isolation, study of pathogenicity and host immune reaction, testing and developing viral vaccines, raising of monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies. Isolation of virus is always considered as a gold standard for establishing viral etiology of a disease. After inoculation of virus sample, the animals are observed for symptoms of disease and mortality. Later, virus is isolated from tissue of animal. Mice is most frequently used for isolation of viruses by animal inoculation. Rabbits were used by Pasteur to adopt street virus of rabies. Guinea pigs react to foot and mouth disease virus when inoculated intradermally in footbed. Primary vesicles is formed on footbed and secondary vesicle appear in the mouth following varemia. Ferrets are used in study of pathogenesis of canine distemper virus. To study pathogenicity and host immune reaction, homologous host is used. Example, pig in case of African swine fever. But cost of using homologous host is very high. Hence, they are replaced by inbred animals, for example, inbred mice for African swine fever cultivation. Mice, guinea pigs, rabbits are used for attenuation of virus strain as well as for testing vaccines. For example, FMD virus vaccine is initially tested in guinea pig and finally in cattle and pigs. Various routes like intracerebral, intranasal, intradermal, intramuscular, intravenous and subcutaneous are employed to inoculate experimental animal with virus infected material. The route of inoculation largely depends upon the nature of virus, possible affinity of virus towards host tissue, species of experimental animals. Due to issues placed by animal welfare system, use of experimental animals in biological work has been replaced to a great extent by embryonating chicken and cell culture. But still, live animal model is a preferred method of studying clinical manifestation, pathogenicity and epidemiology of animal viral disease. It is being used since 1931 when Woodruff and Guspastra cultivated fowl pox virus in a chorioallantoic membrane of embryonated hen's egg. Burnett used chicken embryo for cultivation of viruses extensively. Most of the viruses of that time could be grown in the chicken embryo by various routes of inoculation. Chicken egg is still used for the cultivation of many avian and mammalian viruses. Eggs used for cultivation must be sterile and shell should be intact and healthy. The handling of the eggs should be done in sterilized condition. They are stored in special incubators at 35 to 37 degrees Celsius with relative humidity of 40 to 70 percent. Before the development of cell lines, egg inoculation was one of the preferred methods of virus cultivation. The method is more economical and convenient than animal inoculation. Eggs are readily available, cheap and easy to maintain. They are free from bacteria and many latent viruses and from specific and non-specific factors of defense. 
Amrinated eggs are sensitive to viruses which do not produce infection in adult birds. Culturing viruses in amrinated egg is a preferred method to grow virus in massive quantities for manufacturing vaccines. For example, inactivated and live attenuated influenza vaccine. Growth and multiplication of viruses in fertile egg can be detected by change in embryos like mortality, deformities, hemorrhages of the embryo, pocklesions and edema of chorioallantoic membranes. The different sites of virus inoculation in embryonated eggs are yolk sac, chorioallantoic membrane, allantoic sac, amniotic cavity and intravenous. Yolk sac method. It is preferred to perform in 6 to 8 days old embryos. Virus that can be grow, grown by this route includes avian encephalomyelitis virus, infectious bronchitis virus where it causes dwarfing and curling of embryo. Second is allantoic cavity which is performed in 10 to 12 days old embryo. Virus that can be grown by this route includes influenza virus, Newcastle disease virus. Amnioallantoic fluid shows hemagglutination when the virus grows. Next is chorioallantoic membrane. It is performed in 10 to 12 days old embryo, widely used in veterinary virology. Virus that can be grown by this route includes herpes and pox virus. And virus produces pox lesion on chorioallantoic membrane. Next is amniotic sac method, which is performed in 10 to 14 days old embryo. Virus that can be grown by this route includes influenza virus and mump virus. Last is the intravenous route. It is performed in 13 days old embryo. Virus that can be grown by this route includes blue tongue virus. Growth of the virus can be detected in death of the embryo and other changes. Following table is the route of inoculation and the name of the virus which are to be inoculated. Next is cell culture. It is a process by which cells are grown under controlled conditions in vitro. It is now routinely used for growing viruses. The cultural cells are used for virus isolation, virus titration, vaccine production and biochemical studies. Anders and co-worker in 1979 grew poliovirus in non-neural cells. Cell cultures are classified into three different types based on their origin, chromosomal characters and the number of generation for which they can be maintained. Cell cultures can be produced in large quantities and stored at minus 70 degrees Celsius for use when necessary. These cultures can be radio labeled to study the details of virus multiplication. In this method, tissue are dissociated into cells by treatment with proteolytic enzymes like trypsin or collagenase followed by mechanical shaking. The cells are then washed, counted and suspended in the growth medium containing essential amino acids and vitamins, salts, glucose and a buffering system, supplemented by up to 5% fetal calf serum and antibiotics. The cell suspension is suspended in glass or plastic bottles or petri dishes. On incubation, the cells adhere to the glass surface and divide to form confluent monolayer sheet of cells covering the surface within a week. Types of cell cultures are number one, primary cell culture, where the cells are initiated from tissues or animal embryos and newborns. Initially, culture will have epithelial and fibroblastic cells. After few passages, fibroblast cells predominate. Primary cells usually have limited lifespan 
the cells can be subcultured up to 5 to 10 divisions. The examples include calf kidney cell culture, kidney, kid kidney cell culture, etc. Second is the diploid cell culture. Diploid cell strains are of a single cell type that retains the original diploid chromosomal number. These are serially propagated primary cell cultures that is obtained as a result of subcultures of primary cultures. They can be cultured for maximum 50 serial passages. They are also used for production of vaccines. For example, Vista strain of human embryo lung WI38 for the cultivation of fixed rabies virus. Last is the continuous cell lines. Cells have been continually passaged over a long period of time, capable of indefinite cell divisions, that is, they are immortal. The cells have abnormal chromosome number and morphology and are of single cell type. Example BHK21, PK15, Hela, Ferro cell lines. These cell lines have been used extensively for the growth of number of viruses. Growth of virus in cell cultures can be detected by cytopathic effect, hematsorption, heterologous interference, transformation, light microscopy, immunofluorescence and electron microscopy.